All right, so on the manual, you do have an important note here to check your voltage before you power the printer on. So that is on the back of the printer and we'll definitely go over that here in a second. But yeah, make sure you don't forget about that. It shows you here a picture of the printer and what everything is and then everything that's included, all the parts. Starting here on number one, we're gonna grab the gantry, which is the upper portion, and we're gonna connect it to the base. And there's a couple screws that go on each side that tighten into the gantry. And they are the M440s. And obviously that's pretty easy to find because they do label the bags. So let's go ahead and grab them. And there are four of them. There's also a little locking washers on them, so make sure they're on. And they're gonna go through here. So let's go ahead and flip the printer back around. And here you kind of see where it sits down into. And on the other side, we do have a ribbon cable that we're gonna have to move here. Peel that off. So the ribbon cable is actually going to travel onto the gantry. You can kind of see, and there's a sticker behind it, which we'll have to peel here in a second and stick it. But for now, we just wanna kind of get it out of the way. So let's go ahead and grab our gantry facing to the front. And the front is where your shelf was. We're gonna just set it down right into those little grooves there on both sides. And watch out for the little plugs there in the back. We will be plugging in in a second. Right now what we need to do is secure the gantry to the base. The easiest way to do this, yeah, we're just gonna lift the corner of the printer on one side, and then we're gonna grab a bolt and start it underneath. Now if you wanna make it a little easier for yourself, you can grab this spool that was included and kinda just put it underneath the printer. Hold the upper portion while trying to start the bolt. So whatever is easier for you, or even you can go off of the edge of the table and do that. So yeah, what's funny is the two wrenches that they included don't even fit these bolts. So yeah, I think they messed up on the wrenches for me. They're both the same and I haven't had any use for them yet. So yeah, what you wanna do is you just wanna snug these up or not snug them, just run them down. And we don't wanna tighten them yet. And I'll show you guys the reason why in a second. Let's go ahead and move to the other side and do the same thing here. Grab our bolts. So we just ran them down, but did not tighten them. So it's still kind of loose. And the reason for that is because we want to bring the X axis down where the distance between the two bottoms here is going to be relevant to our rollers on the sides here. But before we do that, it appears that we need to go ahead and deal with this ribbon cable here. And the ribbon cable actually connects up here. But be very careful with this ribbon cable. So we're trying to take this connector here and just go right up like that. And you guys can see, and then it's gonna plug right here. Now, the thing that we need to do is go ahead and stick it on here with this double-sided tape. Start from the bottom, and it's gonna expose the stickiness. So try your best, obviously, to line it up the best you can. So about in the middle of the channel, and we're just gonna slowly kind of work ourselves up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this thing up higher because I believe, yeah, we can go ahead and stick it all the way before we even go underneath. So I'm just gonna run it up all the way. Then we're gonna go ahead and stick this as we go up. Okay, so mine isn't so straight. I guess I messed up. Okay, well we can't peel it off. Look at that. All right, so I'm gonna try to line it up here a little better, right in the middle. Okay, that's better. I'm happy with that. If you can do yours straight right off the bat, that'd be better, as it will probably stick better if you don't peel it off. But yeah, all we gotta do now is just run this piece underneath. Go ahead and lower this so you guys can see a little better. Pretty simple. And then we're gonna literally just plug it in right here. So there are a couple tabs that you might wanna push on the sides and be gentle with it. Find the spot that it goes into and it should just click right in. Now again, be very careful. Don't force anything if it doesn't go as everything is pretty you know, precise and small and could be fragile if you're too hard on it. But the reason we wanna go all the way down because we wanna have a spacing before we tighten those bolts on the bottom. And now that our channels are exactly where they need to be, we can go ahead and tighten the bottom. And so this is not gonna be stressed. So you wanna bring this down before you tighten the bolts on the bottom. All right, so let's snug these up. Pretty good tightness. We'll do the other side. And we are done with that step. So I'm actually noticing guys that we do have a little issue here. The printer is not flat on the base from this corner here. So we do have some high corners and this table I know is very straight. So we probably should have checked that before we put the gantry on, but it's no big deal because if we look at the sides here, there's a couple bolts on this side and then a couple on the other side. And if we loosen those, we can kind of move the base a little bit. So it'll be flat. So let's go ahead and do that. Now the other side. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna relieve the pressure and drop where it needs to go. Also make sure you're not sitting on any kind of wires on the feet. But yeah, once it sits flat, then you can retighten these bolts on the side and it won't wobble at all. So yeah, not too hard to do, quite straightforward. So for step two, we need to plug in the motors on the two sides, which if we flip to the back, we can see the two plugs here coming out from the bottom to each motor and they simply just plug in and they are labeled a Z1 and Z2. So for the next step, we're gonna be connecting the hot end extruder assembly to the X-axis cradle, and we're gonna need the M48 bolts, and then also we're gonna plug it in on the side. So here we have the little bolts. 
there's three of them. Let's go ahead and raise our Z axis here. I'm gonna bring you guys down so you can see a little better. So here we are looking at the back of the printer and on our assembly here, we can see that there's some threads on the back, one on the top and then two on the bottom. And those are actually gonna line up here. So there's a hole here and then two on the bottom. So we're gonna grab a bolt, line up the hot end assembly. We'll start with the top one here. And you guys probably can't see at all, but yeah, it's pretty simple. It just all lines up. And actually these rollers at the other end, the bolts or whatever's back there, they kind of indent into the here. But yeah, one bolt here and then two on the bottom. The last one. So you don't want to go crazy, but you know, decent amount. They are small little bolts, so yeah. And that's it. So let's go ahead and flip it around and remove the tape. I'm gonna go to the side here a bit so you guys can see a little better. Maybe, it's really hard to see, but there is a port right here that we can plug this ribbon cable into. And it's literally just gonna go right in there. Just like that. And it's now operational. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna be installing our display, which is gonna go on the side, put a couple bolts in it, which are M416, and then we're gonna plug in the screen. So this plug here is what plugs on the screen, and it kind of comes out on the side here. There are some threads right here, and those are gonna line up with the screen that mounts literally right here, just like that. So the two bolts are gonna go here, which is our last packet, the M416s. So let's go ahead and grab them. And before I tighten them on, let's go ahead and plug the screen in. Pretty simple. So this doesn't have to be very tight at all. Snug it up a bit and that's it. And our screen is on now. And this is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and put our tray back in there. There we go. So we're starting to really make some progress here and I think we're getting pretty close to being finished. Or are we finished? No, we're not yet because we still need to install the spool holder on the top. And that's this piece here. And it is finished off in this nice gunmetal color. So this part's metal, but this part here, I think is plastic. Yeah, it is. And it's already installed there, so that's nice. And we do have pre-installed bolts and some T-nuts on the bottom. And so the way T-nuts work is they're gonna drop in the channel and then turn and lock in. So we are gonna be installing this on the left side if you're looking at the printer. And so the way the spool holder is gonna go is it's gonna face to the front like this. And we're gonna install it here somewhere on this channel. So according to the diagram, it needs to go somewhere here because the whole idea here is our filament is gonna go down from here into the extruder here. And I'm gonna flip this around guys so you can see maybe. Yeah, so the way the T-nuts work is you're gonna unscrew it and then screw it back in and the T-nut is going to turn into the channel and lock in. And then as you're tightening it, it'll compress them together. So you do have to have it all lined up in the groove so you can, you know, turn in there. So if you're having trouble, just unscrew it and screw it back in. Being lined up, it should turn and lock in. And it's not too hard once you figure it out, but if it's your first time using T-nuts, they are a little bit different than you would think, so. So yeah, and our last step here is installing the ribbon cable that we've done already, which is over here. And that is everything for the installation. Now that doesn't mean that we're done yet because we do need to check our rollers. So the bed has rollers and the X axis here has rollers and also the Z axis has rollers. So the most important ones will be the Y, which is the bed and the X, which is here. The Z is somewhat important, but because it doesn't travel so much, it just slowly incrementally travels, you know, it doesn't have to be as perfect as these two. So you definitely want to concentrate on getting these rollers right. So on this machine, it actually all feels really good. And the way I check them, and I don't know if you guys can see, but there's some rollers under there. As I stick my hand under there and I spin them. These are actually adjusted perfect, which is quite interesting. I'm guessing they adjusted them really good from the factory, so I don't need to do anything. But there's two rollers on each side. Two of them are stationary and then two are adjustable. And so the adjustable ones, you can grab this larger open-ended wrench and actually turn them or turn the nut, which will make the roller go farther or closer away from the channel. And so what you wanna do is you wanna have the roller barely touching, but not too tight. Cause if you have them too tight, it'll wear them out. But if it's too loose, the bed's gonna wobble. So you wanna have that perfect balance between too tight and not too loose. So the looser, the better is usually the best way to get them right. And also you'll have a really smooth glide on the rail when they're looser. Now, same thing for the X axis. If we flip it around, we can see it a lot better as we have rollers here on top. So the X axis is too tight for sure because I can barely spin them with my hand. So that means they're way too tight. So even though it still feels reasonably smooth, I can feel that it is too tight. So we have two stationaries up here and an adjustable down here. So I'm just gonna grab my wrench and turn the eccentric nut a little bit. So the idea here is to be able to turn these in one spot. But you don't want this machine here to be too loose on the x-axis because we do have a direct drive extruder that is quite heavy. So you want this to be pretty reasonable tightness as it does carry a good amount of weight. So 
But yeah, I did loosen up a bit and it's definitely much better now. And we don't have any wobble. So if you loosen it too much, you're gonna have wobble. And that's pretty much how you do it. And then you have rollers here. So we got two on the outside and then one on the insides which are adjustable. On here, everything's adjusted pretty well. And these don't have to be perfect. As long as they're pretty close, which mine are, you can go ahead and leave them because the amount of distance this thing travels is not very much. And it's not gonna wear out these things very fast. If you wanna try to perfect it, you can. But a lot of times you can't get it all right because there's so much brackets and the distance between the two and things like that, it makes it really complicated. So as long as you're close, you're fine. So don't worry about these too much. Now, the other thing that you could check for, but on this printer is very hard to see is the belts inside the channel. So the way this thing is designed, they're all inside, including here on the X axis. So it is a little bit hard to tell, but you can see the belt underneath here. Maybe you can see me pulling it down. So what you want to make sure is they're not too loose or too tight. And the way you adjust them is here on the end, we can see a little screw and here we can, you know, tighten it up or loosen it according to what we need. So the belt, you know, it's hard to kind of say how tight it needs to be, but you know, you can experiment with it. Too tight makes it not good as it puts a lot of stress on everything and too loose might have some slop in it. So you definitely don't want your belt tight where you can play music on it, but not too loose where it's just kind of like almost sagging. So just a reasonable amount of tension and same thing for the Y belt which is here up front and it's adjustable here and you can kind of feel it here in this groove you can see the belt right here so on mine the Y does seem to be a little loose so I'm gonna tighten it up here on the front just a little bit to give it a little tightness yeah that feels a little better so yeah and that should be good as long as everything's running smooth there's nothing funny happening you should be good. And yeah, that's pretty much everything as far as assembly goes and adjustments. 